Hey guys, Sean T. Phillips here with a brand new DVD Blu-ray Tuesday Sean Bear today. Now you're going to go out and see what things came out today and today is actually a really huge DVD and Blu-ray release week. There's tons of things that come out today, a lot of different things I'm actually looking for. I feel like most of them are going to be at uh, Walmart for the most part. That's pretty much as far as I can tell. That's where I'm thinking are going to have these things. Uh, hopefully though I don't have to go to a couple different Walmarts because sometimes they don't put everything out yet so then I have to go to some other ones or everything's still in the boxes and all that kind of stuff. That happens a lot and it's not that early but sometimes that that usually happens quite a bit on Tuesdays, so we shall see if I can find this stuff. And also at the end of this video, going to have a couple new DVD and Blu-ray reviews, as well as this uh, Saturday being the lookout for my brand new DVD Blu-ray update as well. A lot of cool stuff in that update coming up. Anyway though, guys, let's get going and see what we can find today. Into Target we go. And the one big release that came out today was, you know, The Secret Life of Pets, and I actually really like this movie a lot. Very fun film, and they have in here for $19.99 this Only a Target gift set edition of this one. It has in here like a photo frame. I've never seen one that kind of came with a photo frame before, like any DVD or Blu-ray in the past, at least as far as I can think of. It has like four uh, wall deca you know, decals with that. So that's actually kind of cool, different thing. Like I said, I've never seen them have something like that in with a Blu-ray or DVD. And the regular uh, Blu-ray edition of that one is $19.99, so it's actually the same price if you guys are interested, though, in this only at Target gift set edition of that one. Like I said, though, really was actually probably one of my favorite animated movies, you know, in a long time, next to the one that I feel like kind of people didn't talk about as much, Trolls. Trolls, though, for some reason, I really like that one a lot. And the other big one today was, you know, uh, Jason Bourne, which is the newest Bourne film, and I actually have never watched any of these movies. Like, I don't know how. I've never seen, I don't know, maybe I saw, like, one randomly, but I don't think I've seen, like, maybe Maybe one that's about it but they have somewhere I don't see that edition in here anywhere but an exclusive edition of that one that says it has like 30 minutes of exclusive bonus content I'll have to see if they have that in the actual section itself but they have all the other Bourne films as well you know on sale here like I said I think like if I saw any I think it might have been like maybe it was um this one I saw, I don't know. I don't. I, I really don't think I've seen any of these though. Yeah, and over here in the section though, they have the Jason Bourne one that comes with you know the 30-minute uh, you know extra footage exclusive third discs in here. So if you guys are interested in that one, they have that you know exclusive one with an uh, extra disc in here, and they have you know the 4K release of that one as well. The other one today, I think the other one today. Oh yeah, they also have Jason Bourne. They have like this this set here that has all five of the movies together for $54, and I believe. I believe this one was today as well, this movie called The Late Bloomer. I don't know a ton about this one, but I know this one, you know, came out today. But one of the one things I was going to get today, though, for sure, were Scream Queens. Really like this show a lot. The, the newest season, I don't think, is as strong as the last one, but still really like that one a lot. It's it, I checked the price, so it says over here $22.99, but this is actually on sale, you know, for $12.99 here. So this is definitely one of the ones, though, I was going to get today. Yeah, so I ended up getting Scream Queens in there. Like I said, it was $12.99. The thing says $22.99, but that's not the price of that one. I think when I looked online, like Walmart looked like that's what it was. I have to go there and see what they're selling it for. And I think it's $12.99 as well at Best Buy. But I saw the thing there and it said like less than three available. So I definitely wanted to make sure to get it first, just in case though they didn't have very many. It's one of those ones too. There is no Blu-ray release of it. That's the one thing with a lot of um, Fox titles. They don't put too many of them besides um, American Horror Story on Blu-ray. Even like uh, some of the other ones that they had like, f you know, the first season of it, like Empire on Blu-ray, they didn't put the DVD, they only put it on DVD for the second season. So it's kind of a shame because like they don't even have it. I kind of always think like if they're on you know, only going to release it on DVD, I kind of wish they would have like, you know, with the Voodoo digital copy, I kind of wish that one would be HD so you could at least watch it again in HD if you wanted to so you know since you can't buy it or they would do like manufacture and demand blu-rays because that's what they did sometimes with certain shows and stuff like that i think warner brothers does that you know like for certain shows like if they only have the dvd that you can get in store they have like the blu-ray version you know on the warner archive site into walmart we go and in Walmart, they have their own edition here of, you know, Secret Life of Pets, this limited edition gift set one here, which comes with these key chains of the characters. That's actually a pretty cool one. Like I said, this one is only at Walmart, and that one is $22.99, and their regular edition here is $19.99, and they have as well the 4K here of that one for uh, $25.96, and they have their edition here of Jason Bourne, which is, you know, exclusive uh, steelbook packaging one of this one. This has in here, you know, plus collectible book. It's 
it sort of seems like when it comes to steelbooks, uh, Best Buy isn't getting them as much. Now I've been seeing like Target and Walmart getting a lot more of the steelbooks. And then another one that came out today, I'm gonna have a review of the, the Chrome edition of this one. This seems to be only the DVD one of this. The Mad Max collection here, which you know has all the movies and the black and white edition of the newest film, you know, Fury, Fury Road. But over here in the section though, um, a lot of the stuff isn't out yet. There's a couple of different things that I was gonna try and get that I don't see here yet. Like this movie Trash Fire and Remains. So I'm probably gonna have to go to another place to get them. But the one thing they did have, I'm definitely gonna get this movie called Siren, which is like the one segment from uh, VHS, the first VHS movie about that girl they take home and then she like attacks them and like flies away and stuff. This is like extended version of this one, you know, as a uh, feature. It was a definitely really interested in seeing this one looks like a pretty cool one and like I showed you know in Target this one uh, late bloomer and this one is today as well this one my dear boyfriend you know our Heather Graham movie which could be kind of interesting this one uh, don't think twice and this one that stars you know Billy Joe Armstrong I feel like this might be the first movie he's acting in but I might be wrong this movie called ordinary world if you guys have seen this one though let me know how this one is other than that over here though um, dead rising and Endgame, which is the second Dead Rising movie, came out today. And I think this was today, this movie, Perfect Weapon and Lone, Lone Wolves, I believe that was today. I think this one was today as well. It's a lot of different stuff today. Uh, Jack Goes Home, and then, you know, this one, the um, Possession Experiment, came out today as well. As well as um, uh, Abby Grace, this one was today. So like I said, a pretty big release week. Hidden in the Woods was today. Uh, the Devil's Dolls, I'm going to have a review of that one uh, this weekend. So be on the lookout for that one. But that was actually pretty good. And then the last one I believe that they have in here today was Krampus Unleashed. And I think this is a sequel because I think they put out one another Krampus movie, one of these. It's not related to this one, but this is like a different one. But other than that, though, like I said, the other ones I was going to try and get was, you know, remake and trash fire so I'm definitely gonna have to go to another Walmart to see if they have those ones you know I believe they're all in these boxes over here but I don't really want to dig around in them they're kind of all on top of each other but I can guarantee that's where they are yeah so I ended up getting that siren in there as you see though I've been bringing in my own bags because then you know now in California like I said before if you want a bag you know they banned like regular plastic bags if you need a bag you have to pay 10 cents so I'm just sort of stuffing my pockets with these bags that I bought already and bringing them in like I said, I did get that movie. I'm going to probably go now to another Walmart just to see if they have the other one. Like the only one, out of those two ones, that Trash Fire movie though was one of those ones I did want to get. But, you know, I'm sure it was in one of those boxes, but there was really nobody in there to ask. And they were all stacked on top of each other. And I know they would have been like, ooh, I don't want to dig in all that. So we'll go to another one, see if they've got that. Into the second Walmart we go. And I've got to keep my fingers crossed that this one put everything out. Otherwise, I'll have to go and root in the boxes, I think. I think there'd be no other option but rooting around. And this location seems to have everything put out. The other stuff in the front, though, that this one has is, um, this. I think this is a lot of different places, but this is like uh, the Deadpool one that has like the Christmas edition. I think a lot of places have this, but they added like Santa and Christmas stuff to that. But the one thing that's pretty cool they actually have in stores, and I'm going to have a review of this this weekend, you know, in the update on Saturday, Phantasm Remastered. And this one looks great, though. The picture on this is amazing, but it's kind of cool to actually see them selling that in Walmart. But over here in the section, though, everything is out. So here's all the main things that came out today. I think this call-up movie, they didn't have that out on the shelf in the other one. Um, but they actually, the other one that came out today, and they only seem to have the uh, DVD of this one. I should also have a review of this one soon as well. It's Phantasm Ravenger. And this is, you know, I think this is the fifth movie, I believe. But as far as I can tell, though, they only have the DVD edition of that one in here. But the ones that I was getting, though, was this one called Trash Fire. This actually looks like a pretty cool movie uh, from what I saw about this one. It's kind of cool to see Orion Pictures is back now producing stuff because they've been, you know, were gone for so long. And I think like uh, 
two or three years ago they came back again and the other one that came out today too was this movie called The Remains and it's you know I always kind of like these haunted house kind of movies and it sort of looks from the cover like Amityville Dollhouse a little bit so I'm going to get that one as well and like I said those were the main ones I was trying to get in the other location that they didn't have out and I think this might have been today this family guy one and they have in here too uh, Scream Queens season one like I said I got that in Target but their edition is uh, 1996 in here for that one and this came out today as well this uh, Rocky Horror Picture Show and I looked at some of this when this was on TV I don't know I did not love this one I like really love the original film this new one was okay from what I saw I mean to me it was kind of cool they got Tim Curry in it but other than that it just I don't know it's I didn't really like it very much at all like I could really hardly get through it I just did not really love that yeah, and ended up picking up both those ones in there. And luckily enough, you know, they had all the stuff put out. Because it's funny, this location is the one that usually doesn't have the stuff put out. But luckily enough, it all was today. Into Best Buy we go. And in Best Buy, they don't have any exclusive editions of Secret Life of Pets, but they do have in here like this, the dog from the movie you can actually buy for $9.99. So that's kind of a cool little thing. Because I don't think it comes, oh no, it comes free Max Plus when you buy Secret Life of Pets on 4K. So if you got the 4K one, you get the, um, you know, Max Plus free. So that's pretty cool. But in here today, though, all the stuff that I picked up, though, you know, the siren and the trash fire, and so they don't seem to have any of those ones in here. And like I said, though, let me know how this one is if you guys have seen this Ordinary World one. And I really do think it's the first movie that Billy Joe, you know, from Green Day has acted in. And that one's, you know, only $14.99 in here today. And I think this one is an exclusive thing to Best Buy. I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is an only a Best Buy edition here of the Harry Potter movies, this eight collectible steelbooks thing in here. It's $100, but it's actually kind of cool. All the Harry Potter movies in this exclusive steelbook edition here of this. And they also have this only, um, you know, a Best Buy Hunger Games edition. But like I said, this one, they have the Blu-ray here for $74.99 of all the Mad Max movies. And like I said, I'm gonna have a review at the end of the uh, black and white edition of Fury Road. But that's kind of cool. It says one thing in here too. So this is the oh, so this is the 4K edition one. I get, I don't know. I guess it's the 4K of all the movies. I don't know if that's what that. No, it's only the 4K in here of Mad Max Fury Road in this set. So if you guys are interested in that. This has the 4K edition of that in this one. Well, that's all for this DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping for today. Like I said, I actually picked up a lot of stuff today. It was a really, really big release week. Like I always say, guys, though, if you enjoy these uh, DVD Blu-ray Tuesday shopping videos, definitely give this video a thumbs up. Leave me comments below on what things you guys picked up. Now stay tuned now for a couple new DVD and Blu-ray reviews. And the first one I got from Warner Bros. is the brand new edition of Mad Max Fury Road, which comes with the original version of Mad Max Fury Road, as well as Mad Max Fury Road, the Black Chrome edition. And this is basically Mad Max Fury Road. And if you guys don't know the movie, it's, you know, the character Mad Max and he ends up getting you know taken in and you know held captive by this terrible bad guy and he's you know out in the desert kind of controlling everything this guy and he has all these women that he's kind of taken as his prisoners or kind of his wives and what ends up happening is Mad Max and these women all end up escaping and it's the bad guy and all of his like minions trying to chase Mad Max and them all through the desert and it's pretty much like 90% of the movie is all in the cars and them kind of racing around and having them all coming after them and like amazing stunt scenes. And, you know, George Miller, too, really wanted to do pretty much like 90% of this movie is like as much as, as he could as practical effects. And that's what really gives us a cool look. Now, basically what the Black Chrome Edition is, is the movie in black and white. And it's like, it's not all like the same level black and white. It's like some like super, super high contrast levels and almost like silverish looking black and white and bluish black and white in certain scenes it definitely gives the movie a different really different dark like look to it a totally different vibe I, I you know I really love the original version of the movie you know in color you know because I thought there was some really cool like tints in the makeup and stuff and the makeup in black and white doesn't read exactly the same like you know the characters like um because they all had like the white stuff on their face it does look cool though because it's got you can it, you see in the black and white more of like the cracks and stuff like that with the makeup and that kind of look but you don't see like the white level of the makeup and that kind of stuff as much as you did but like i said this one though has all the original features but it has on here though like i said the the you know two blu-rays in here one of them is the original one and one of them is the black and white one and then it has an introduction by george miller on the black and white edition now the next one here 
here some 4K releases, some catalog titles. Uh, I'm basically going to talk a little bit about these ones. Uh, the first one here is the 4K edition of, you know, Will Smith film I Am Legend. Now I want to mention too with these, on the, uh, the 4K version, it has the theatrical version and then, you know, with the commentary from, I think it's commentary on all of them, but then the Blu-ray one is the ones that have the alternate cuts for the ones that have alternate cuts. But if you guys don't know I Am Legend, it's basically Will Smith is the last man on earth. It's a remake of I'm Omega Man and, you know, the I Am Legend with, you know, Vincent Price. It's basically Will Smith is the last man on earth and he is, you know, but but the people, though, that survived, they all had, like, some of them survived turned into these kind of creatures that are lurking around at night. So he's always having to go back to his house in the middle of the night and barricade the door to keep these people from coming in. And he's in there kind of working on a cure, seeing if he can try and figure out exactly how to cure this and, you know, stop and figure out what has happened and how to control this because, you know, he was a scientist. The movie, though, um, in 4K, though, the one thing I will say, since the movie is really heavy in, like, effects, a lot of digital effects, the digital effects, you know, since this is, this is an older movie, this is, like, 2007, I think this was 2007, 2008, the digital effects don't look as great as they could, you know, as something now would, because the, the 4K, that's the one thing with digital effects, it makes them look a little bit more effectsy with some of the stuff. But the actual picture of, you know, like the scenes and everything like that, the biggest thing that I notice with, you know, with 4K is not always as much with the sharpness, is more with the HDR, which is high dynamic range, which is more the contrast levels and the things like if a scene is darker, it's like, you know, it brightens it up and you can see a lot better, way more detail and also more color schemes and things like that, that you would see more in the theatrical version, you know, when you'd see it in a theater as opposed to when you're seeing it at home. The next one is one that I had, I actually like... Don't know if I had ever seen this before, but I recently, you know, just watched this one, and I, I, felt, I was thinking, like, did I see this before at some point? And I cannot remember for sure, but this is the Ben Affleck film which he directed called The Town. And this actually, out of all the 4Ks I've seen, looks the best. This movie was a very, like, just because of the way it was shot is a very dark look to it and like really just like really dark vibe and everything and it really read well in 4k really looks great but if you guys don't know the movie it's basically about four um you know uh, ben affleck and his team and they go around kind of robbing banks and they do this one bank robbery and they end up taking um rebecca hall's character as you know captive you know kind of they kind of kidnap her and kind of as collateral so they can get away from the cops and they end up letting her go and then, you know, they're all kind of like nervous about it, you know, that she's going to, that she might have seen something on them and she might be able to identify them since she is the witness and she, you know, she got in the car with them. So they end up telling Ben Affleck to kind of follow her and watch her to make sure what she's doing and stuff. And he ends up following her. And of course, he starts to like her and it becomes this relationship thing going on. By the same time, he wants to kind of get out of this life, but he has to deal with this and he's like stuck in this whole business. I really, really like Jeremy Renner in this, though. His character was so good. His acting in this was amazing. I actually thought this was a great movie, but it has on here, though, the extended version of this movie on the, the uh, Blu-ray one. The other um, Ben Affleck film is a movie called Argo, and this was like about people that were held prisoner in Iran, and they end up, you know, that's they have to... Ben Affleck's character is trying to put together like a plan of how to get them out. So he's coming up with this idea of making a making it like he's making this film in Iran and like getting together the whole film crew and everything. And really, he's not making a, a film. He, ha he makes a fake script and everything to try and get over there and get these prisoners that are hiding out with the Canadian embassy group there. And he goes in there to try and get them out. This one looked really good as well. This one was had more of a... I think this was shot on film. So, like, it had more of a film look to this. But, like I said, out of all these ones, I think The Town looked the greatest. I actually like The Town a lot more. I really like Argo, though. But I think The Town, though, is at least my favorite movie that I've seen that he's directed. And the next one here in 4K as well is Goodfellas, which, you know, is a movie that I actually only recently saw this one maybe two years ago. It was one of those movies I had always heard about and finally saw this. And this is basically, though, if you guys don't know the movie, it's Ray Liotta's character character and it's kind of talking about his early days and how up until now about how he ended up getting into this the mob and working for Robert De Niro's character and how he started out you know small and kind of got into this business but kind of like the things that he had to do in this business and the kind of the bad stuff that was happening around him people were getting killed and all this kind of stuff and it's kind of like leading up to bad stuff going on and Joe Pesci's in this movie as well this one actually looked really good as well this and the one thing too like with this movie I was noticing was 
look way more because I put in the Blu-ray too and compare them and stuff. Is way more details and stuff. Like for a weird example, like there was one scene when the one character was cutting up like garlic and like the super closeness of the garlic, you can like see the the details. And the other thing too with 4K, you see more like. Um, like, like, like with one thing I was watching recently, you see like the makeup under people's eyes a lot more. You can see people's hair a lot more. It's like, it's like weird little, it's very hard to explain all the 4K stuff. But to me, the biggest thing really is the high dynamic range. That is the biggest thing you notice the most is the, you know, contrast levels to these movies. Uh, the next one here from Paramount is a movie called Florence Foster Jan Janking Jenkins. And I believe this was a true story in the stars Meryl, Meryl Streep and Hugh Grant. And it's basically about Meryl Streep is you know this woman who has these dreams of singing and it was a Carnegie Hall, Hall Carnegie Hall she has this huge dream of this and um, her husband is played by Hugh Grant in the movie and he, he, he kind of puts on this show with her um, where he like owns the theater and puts on these shows and he always because she like really is not talented at all he puts her in the show but she doesn't speak she kind of just stands there and does weird stuff but she has like this dream of singing and like making it big with the singing so she ends up getting a music tutor, and he, she's getting tutored, and she's terrible, doing terrible opera. She can't sing at all. Everybody, like, laughs at her. And basically what happens, though, is he's kind of, like, paying people off to act like she's great, and everybody around her is kind of under the table with Hugh Grant, like, him giving him money or, like, talking him into saying how good she is. So she doesn't really know how terrible she is because everybody around her is going, oh, you're so great, you're amazing. It's a, that's essentially what this movie is. It's a really funny character piece. If You you know, I always like Meryl Streep, and, I, and she did a great job playing somebody who cannot sing at all and went really over the top with the singing and, like, the theatrics and everything. And has on here, though, uh, deleted scenes on here, the music of the film, designing the look, a Q&A with Meryl Streep, and live at Carnegie Hall, and a number of other uh, features on this one as well. The next one here from uh, Disney is Star Wars, and this is called the Free Maker Free Maker Adventures. This is Star Wars Lego. And I think it's kind of fun about the, the Lego series is they always kind of have that same feel. Like with the Lego movie, they kind of take like something like Star Wars and they give it like a kind of comedic, more silly kind of vibe to it. If you guys know like the Lego movie, it's kind of like over the top and kind of jokey and slapsticky a little bit to it. This is basically about a family, though, that goes around and kind of picks up scrap metal and things like that to and scrap ships and build ships and things like that. And, you know, since it's in the Lego world, they're like building it out Lego pieces and all that kind of stuff since everybody is Legos but it's basically though about this um you know what do you call the thing the um uh, the lightsaber, the one ca character ends up finding, and it's basically about Darth Vader trying to find this certain lightsaber, but he ends the one, you know, kid ends up finding out that he has these abilities and things like that, and he maybe is a Jedi, and it's kind of like Darth Vader trying to get this thing, and then the family going from planet to planet and other kind of locations with their adventures and things like that. But has on here, though, uh, bonus features on here, uh, and there's some bonus featurettes on this one. Uh, the next one here from Twilight Time, this is a limited edition release here, this is a um, Rob Williams movie. I had not seen this movie in a very long time. A really great movie. And like it always, it always is kind of sad for me now to watch Rob Williams movies because of how you know I died and everything that happens. And I always cry a little bit more to be honest. Like and like certain movies of his, I would have a hard time watching again. Like Bicentennial Man. But because I was always such a huge fan. Like when it came to like some of my favorite actors of all time, Rob Williams was probably like number one or two. Like I've always been a huge fan of him. But this is a movie that I feel like people don't talk about as much. And this is a limited three thousand copies edition and this is a movie called Moscow on the Hudson and this is basically and you guys don't know this this is uh, with Rob Williams character and he lives in Russia and he kind of um and it, 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 he works with the circus troupe there and he plays the um was it Trump? No, no, this plays a saxophone for the circus troupe. And this is set during when Russia had things were terrible there and they like had to wait in line for bread and they had all kinds of terrible stuff going on there and it was all oh, the communists and everything going on and him and his friend there you know his friend is in the circus troupe with him as well as talking about how when they go because they're going to be going to America for like two or three days to perform in the circus there for like this one night only show and He's saying, well, when I get there, I'm going to defect and I'm going to stay there and I'm going to go, going to go through the process. And Ron Williams is like, don't tell me this. And that's the whole thing. But what ends up happening, though, is Ron Williams ends up going there. And when he ends up getting to Bloomingdale's, he kind of 
like realizes that how different and how nice things are in America and how everything is, you know, the things that he's going through over there are so different. And he ends up going, I defecting. And it's kind of about him and the guy who's like the security guard there who helps him and he becomes friends. And the girl who works at the um, perfume counter, how he kind of has a relationship with her. And it's kind of his journey of trying to become an American citizen, but just such a great movie. And Ron Williams actually learned Russian for this and like was really great doing Russian. It wasn't like somebody who was like really like didn't know what they were doing with it like he really really was great with it but this is a very sweet nice movie really love this one if you guys have seen this one let me know what you guys think but if you, if you, if you guys want to Ron Williams movie that maybe you haven't seen I would definitely recommend this the next one here from Twilight Time as well is a movie called Pretty Poison with his, his Anthony um, Perkins movie which I had never seen um from 1968, and it's basically, he's a guy who ends up, you know, getting out of the, the mental hospital. He just gets out, and he's got all these kind of weird things that he does, like he's acts like he's a spy and he says all these stuff like he has dreams of going on his spaceship out to venus and he just talks all this crazy stuff and right when he's leaving the doctor's like you know cut it out with that you gotta stop with that crazy stuff and he's like, oh i'm only i'm only kidding he ends up meeting this like 17 year old girl that he that he likes and he starts like telling her all these crazy things like this is give this thing, you know, meet me at the rendezvous point at the movie theaters at six, 100 hours and all this saying all this crazy stuff. And she goes and actually meets him at the movie theaters. And he's saying all this stuff to try and impress her and act like he's like with the CIA and he's a spy and all this stuff. And they end up kind of like hanging out together. And uh, since he's nuts, they're kind of doing all these weird things and it's kind of leading up to odd stuff going on. It's a very quirky peculiar type movie and you know uh anthony perkins is like amazing when he plays like these kind of crazy characters because you guys know from like psycho and like um uh, every he's been in a lot of different ones when he played like crazy type roles but well, this is one like i said i had never seen before and both of these ones though look great on um, blu-ray uh the next one here from um paramount is a show that i don't think this is going to get a second season unless it comes out to like hulu or somebody else like picks it up or netflix and it, this show actually gave me like weird dreams <laughs> because it was like dealing with these ants and it's basically a show called brain dead and it's set with this guy who's like running for congress and his sister who comes there to help him you know with his campaign and it's all set with like kind of political stuff going on but what ends up happening is this like this crate they these people end up discovering and inside this crate there was this weird type of thing that had like these ants in it that got out and basically what's going on though is ants are going around these ants and going into like uh, political figures ears and things like that and like ter like making their brains in the mush and kind of controlling them it's got like that kind of invasion the body snatchers type feel to this this is i think this was on like c CBS or something. I believe it was, it was what it was on. It definitely has that kind of feel that would be more like like a Showtime kind of show or something. I almost feel like that could have been why it didn't make it was because it was just a very quirky, weird show about the like the politics and everyone getting taken over. And they use real video of like Trump and Hillary Clinton, and it's very topical and modern type show. I, I really actually found this one to be a very interesting show. It has on here though. Um, you know, has on here some, in, you know, featurettes and stuff like that. Third party, the politics of brain dead and a gag reel on this one. The next one is from, um, from Paramount as well. And this is Zoo, the complete second season. This is another interesting show. Well, that's a couple episodes of the first season. This is basically a show about all oh, in the in you know the world like the animals have all gone crazy. And it's kind of like the Day of the Animals that movie. Like all the animals are attacking people and killing people and going running wild. And this is picked, picking up you know the show last one ended and it shows like a recap of what happened. And basically though you know they're all thinking that they're going to have to wipe out and kill all the animals. But these group of these people are trying to figure out if there's a way to actually help these animals and if there's like a cure for them and they're trying to basically figure out what they can do to stop this and they're kind of going around to like certain kind of areas too where bad outbreaks and things like that are happening and trying to you know and they're also trying to find like animals that are not affected to try and work on the cure and things like that but has on here though metamorphosis a look at season two of the show gag reel and deleted scenes it's always fun too in these shows have gag reels and stuff to see that kind of stuff the next one i think this one 
I, I think it was sort of a remake of the original series, which I had never seen. I really want to see that show. I remember it was out years ago, and I, somehow I never got to see it. And I think it's on DVD, I'm pretty sure. And it's a show called American Gothic, and this is the complete first season of this. I don't know if this one's going to get a second season or not. But this is basically, though, about this... Uh, there's a fan, like a killer that killed all these people years back and had vanished for years, and it was always leaving these call, calling call, calling cards of these like bells, like this bell killer. Because what basically what ends up happening though is this tunnel in the subway or a tunnel where the cars are going through ends up collapsing, and they find this bell and they find this evidence. And they're trying to figure out exactly if they have a print on who this person is, and it's about basically set with his family that lives in this mansion. And what ends up happening, though, is when they're all there together, one of them ends up discovering in the basement they find a box of those bells. And then they kind of realize that somebody in this house and in this family is this killer. And it's kind of like a whodunit, kind of serious kind of version of, like, Clue, trying to figure out exactly who has done this and if, if somebody in the family is the person, but it's looking really like it is somebody in there. And it's one of those kind of things, like, you can't trust anybody. This has on here deleted and extended scenes. Uh, American Gothic at Comic-Con, which is pretty cool to see, as well as a gag. Real. And the next one here from um, you know Anchor Bay is Fear of the Walking Dead, the complete second season of the show. And if you guys don't know this, this is basically the show that was the prequel to The Walking Dead. And this was set the first season in L.A. It was about a family and these other group of people that kind of got together trying to escape from the, the zombies and trying to figure out where they're going to go to survive. And this show, a large proportion of the show takes place on a, on a boat because it's like the family and the group of the people going on this boat, going around and trying to figure out exactly where they can go to hide out from these zombies. And of course, though they end up having problems along the way they kind of stop off at islands and then other people kind of come along and stuff like that it's basically though just them going around and to different spots and trying to figure out where they're going to relocate if there's anywhere they can go where there isn't the zombies everywhere and there's like some cool stuff too with the zombies in the water. I always like like movies that have zombie scenes with water, like Land of the Dead did that movie Shock Waves. But it has on here though uh, commentaries on here, deleted scenes, the flight uh, four to six six webisodes, a Q and A on here uh, from the, from the pa the Polyfest uh, in L A in 2016, as well as the making of on here. And the next one here from um, Art Exploitation Films is a movie called Counter Clockwise. In this movie, I looked at the one guy, and he he like played a part in um people under the stairs, and he like was one of the guys that was like one of the people under the stairs in that movie. So that was kind of cool. But this movie though is basically about this guy who he's like working with his girl, and there he's working on this kind of device where he can teleport things, and he teleports his dog, and and his dog ends up going missing. Well, he teleports them, and then he get you know he's gone for quite a while, and then he ends up coming back like number of hours later, and he ends up really discovering though, because he ends up really realizing oh it must have worked because the dog came back, he was gone for a while, I don't know where he was, but something must have worked here, so he ends up going through this teleporting device, and when he ends up getting you know through the device, he ends up realizing that something has happened. His his lab, he goes through it, and his lab is like walled off, and like things are all over the things like tarps and stuff. He leaves his lab to go outside, and someone's yelling him saying you're this is private property owned by this comfort corporation what are you doing here and he re comes to realize that something has happened and he's gone into some kind of uh you know if he's gone in into the future or back at the time something has happened and he's realized though that something has happened to his wife and his sister and he they're looking at him like he has done something and you know he's gone you know the him you know, something has happened to him, he's gone missing, and he's back now because of this. It's like a very crazy thing going on with him trying to figure out what he's going to do and how to figure out how to fix what has happened here and really what has happened and trying to actually figure out what has happened. Definitely an interesting, you know, indie uh, time travel kind of teleportation kind of movie. It has on here, though, the making of Counterclockwise. It's a 27-minute making of on here and deleted scenes and a commentary track on this one as well. And the next one here from um, Cinedime, is a you know a western movie called Stagecoast, which stars um Trace Atkins, Judd Nelson, and Kim Coates, and it's basically about um you know uh, uh, Trace Atkins is a guy that he goes around with Judd Nelson's character and he robs stagecoaches and things like that, and he ends up robbing in the beginning of the movie a stagecoach from um you know. Uh, Kim Coates and he ends up accidentally shooting Kim Coates and Kim Coates ends up losing his eye and this is years later Trace Atkins character has gotten out of this business and he's trying to live a normal type life with his wife and he's, he's trying to kind of get away from everything that happened in the past and then what ends up happening is one of the people from his team comes back to him and says you know it's bad so he's he's coming after you know Kim Coates character is coming after you and Kim Coates character ends up you know tracking him down and he ends up you know killing his wife you know Kim 
killing uh, Trace Atkins' wife, and it becomes kind of a revenge thing about Kim Coach trying to come after him, and then Trace Atkins trying to come after him, and it's a whole big kind of revenge crazy thing going around, while at the same time they're going around robbing stagecoaches and stuff like that. I think that, you know, uh, Trace Atkins, though, does a actually pretty good job in these kind of movies. He was another Western movie I saw as well. He definitely has that feel that fits into Western type films. It has on here, though, a behind the scenes on this one. The next one here from PBS is a movie called Super, uh, documentary called Super Tunnel. This is basically about building a new, um, subway system underground in um, you know London it's kind of like a, a brand new tunnel it's kind of like the undertaking of trying to build this thing and all the work because it doesn't even finish off because they're still working on it I think I don't know I think it's still going on right now but it's a documentary about them how you know kind of about the, the subway system in London and how it started and how they built it as well as you know the new system that they're working on now and just kind of trying to build this and kind of them showing where they're doing it and how they're putting it together and all that kind of stuff and the next one here from, um, you know, PBS as well as Cook's County. This is from America's Text, Test Kitchen. I always like these Test Kitchen ones. This is basically, though, if you guys don't know these, it's basically um, kind of a spinoff from the America's, you know, uh, Test Kitchen series. And it's basically them, like, testing out kind of recipes and they're kind of try and one my favorite stuff though is when the guys they taste test things and see like which is the best type of cheese which is the best type of this flour which is the best type of rice and all that kind of stuff and then one guy's like well i picked this one i think this one's about i don't know something about those things i really like and they taste test like uh test like machines and like cooking type of utensils and things like that and the last one here is one you guys know is out here this is from shout factory if you guys are interested this is a kind of like sort of a documentary and kind of like a really well filmed thing about the day of the World Series you know with the Cubs going to the World Series and this is all brand new stuff and these are from 2016 and it's kind of them you know when they're playing the game and kind of cuts back and forth to how they got there and then how you know how it took them so many years to actually get to the World Series and then you know that day and then stuff in the past about you know uh you know them when they kind of almost got there and other times in the past and it's I think it was I can't remember who narrates this one but somebody narrated this one, um, Vince Vaughn. You know, Vince Vaughn was the narrator of this one. But actually, if you guys are interested in this, definitely check this one out, though, if this is like something you guys are interested in. Anyway, though, guys, that's all for the review portion of this video. Thanks again for watching and subscribing, and I'll see you guys later.